Hello everyone and welcome back to 2 Pluto with a big rocket in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul and in this video I am gonna try to bring them back from Pluto but this might not be such a good idea in which case we really need to figure out how to keep them at Pluto permanently uh, so that'll be probably the next thing because bringing them back uh, strikes me as frankly impossible uh, we are probably going to kill them, but we'll give it a go. Uh, if it turns out that it seems more feasible than I think it is, we could plan for that instead. Uh, it would be in total like a 30-year mission, which is not in completely not doable. It's just unlikely to be <laughs> doable. But uh, we have a burn of 7,286 and that's in two days, so basically one orbit, and that'll bring us in on this purple orbit here. I tried to get it here, which would be the least relative velocity to Earth, right? It'd be basically a home and transfer, uh, but that one is a year later if I, well, it's not a year later, it's, uh, well, it's later enough, let me put it that way, because right now we have uh, 14 years and 99 days of food, the water, who knows what's going to happen with that. We have a water recycler, but the question is whether it's going to water recycle enough. And so the limiting factor, I'm going to assume, is the food in, at this point. So we have to get in in 14 years and 99 days. And this Earth encounter is in 14 years and 51 days, so that's good. But if we try to meet up with it here, it instead is past that point. It's 14 years and 100-something days. So we run out of food and they'd probably die. They, I mean, we might run out anyway, but we'll see. Now, if it turns out that they do die from lack of water, I still can test the whole idea of using the pod that we've added, the Lynx uh, capsule here on this side, uh, to bring them back through the atmosphere of Earth. Of course, they'd be going at insane velocities. We do have some fuel locked here to slow down the capsule ahead of time, but that's good for about 2,000 meters per second, and it's looking like they're coming in with an excess velocity of more than 20,000 meters per second. So it's going to be a marginal benefit as far as that's concerned. And the pod is configured to survive Mars re-entry. It's uh, that kind of heat shield, but this whole business of coming back from Pluto, I don't think so. But, you know, I've never tried it before, so we're going to try that. Now, whether we can do this transfer properly or not, I don't know, because we've got ion engines, and if we take a look at the transfer point, it's at this part of our orbit, and, you know, it looks like it has to be done pretty quickly. If We're probably going to end up with a big radial messiness it's not going to be quite right i if it is necessary we can boost up a few times but it's going to be all very inaccurate at the end of the day uh let's see what happens if i increase this let's say instead of on the next orbit we have to go around a few times and so uh let's say we take 10 days to do it or something like that so five orbits or four and uh, we sort of lose the encounter, but we could probably fix that. I mean, at least it's showing those indicators there, so that's not too bad. Uh, that would be fine, that's about the same. Okay, so it, it, maybe it's not going to be too bad. So, anyway, uh, I'm going to try to execute this node, and that'll take a few burns around Pluto, and I'll report how well we do on each. Now, uh, around Pluto, we're not going to be doing all of it. Uh, this is probably, we're gonna have enough to break orbit around Pluto, which is probably just like 800 meters per second of this. For the most part, we're doing this burn in solar orbit. And so, it's gonna be a huge chunk of our, at least, yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> this is, it's not like I've done this before, so, um, if you look at it, and we're coming in very sharply, and we're creating this really fast orbit that if, uh, we continued on the orbit would go would be like comet like if we went slower we'd get to earth safer not quite as quickly but that would take 40 years so we can't do that all right i'll get on with the ion engines 
Okay, so good news, we've broken Pluto orbit. Bad news, sort of not in the right direction because we couldn't apply all 7,000 meters per second immediately. We need to go that a ways, we're going this a ways because this is just our orbit around the sun. So we're going to have to figure out how to burn more that ways. So I'm going to replot and try and figure that out. And hopefully it's not too bad doing it around the sun instead of around Pluto because, you know, so solar fixed instead of getting any sort of help from Pluto. But then uh, Pluto doesn't really give that much as far as Oberth, I think. I mean, we were only going 800 meters per second around it. So I think with a, this magnitude burn, it's not going to be a big deal, but I might be wrong. Okay, well, I've tried to manage something clever with Jupiter because that's a possibility, of course, but I don't entirely trust this line. You can see we do a 8,152 uh, meter per second burn with the ion engines. Uh, the node is set for 47 days. That'll give us enough time to do it. Uh, we don't seem to have enough delta V here, but if we toss off the landers, we probably would. But no, it's still really tight. And what that gets us is an encounter with Jupiter. In theory, see, this this purple orbit line doesn't look much like an orbit line, does it? And that makes me suspicious that it's doing something horribly wrong. It looks like a straight line, which isn't how things work. But anyway, in theory, we could get in here uh, to Jupiter in 13 years and 172 days. And then Jupiter could fling us into this tighter orbit. And you can see that would probably be better than coming in from Pluto because the apoapsis is lower and so we wouldn't be approaching Earth quite so severely. Interestingly, um, after this, because our orbital velocity right here at Pluto is very low, right? And once we get down to here, Jupiter actually flings us into a retrograde orbit around the Sun this way, which is probably bad for meeting up with Earth because Earth is coming in uh, this way at 28,000 whatever, however fast it goes, I think it's 28,000 meters per second, and we're coming in this way with however fast we're coming in. Uh, that's probably even worse. But anyway, it's a moot point because we get there in 15 years and 133 days, and that's too late for the food and oxygen. But I thought about doing this, uh, getting help from Jupiter. I'm going to replot for just direct to... Uh, Earth to see if we can get there properly but yeah this is the best I could do because after all Jupiter's orbit is 12 years so when you think about it there, there's a limited number of possibilities of where we can hit Jupiter and then have it fling us to Earth and uh, I just couldn't manage something much faster than this and I don't know if obviously if we got to Jupiter in 12 years that would be better for getting to Earth on time, but yep, this was the best that I could do with the Delta V that we had, and I mean, getting to Jupiter faster means more Delta V, so we don't have that. But yeah, maybe we could pack some more, either we pack more Delta V or we pack more food and oxygen and probably water, and then maybe we could manage it. But anyway, I'll replot for direct to Earth. Okay, there it is. Um, burn in 44 days, and since we have a total burn time of 81 days, I think we can manage that, but it's going to be interesting. And it basically takes all of our delta V, so if we're inaccurate with the burn, that's a problem. But 14 years and 77 days, and if we take a look at our current food, 14 years and 87 days, so right on time. Not a whole lot of margin. You'd think that launching a mission on the Monument rocket, everything would be all right, right? I mean, it'd be a breeze. No, not so much. Okay, anyway, uh, I think we need to get rid of the landers after all. So I'm going to transfer what I can transfer in. Well, the useful stuff, the carbon dioxide can go away. And then we'll slough them up, off and then we'll see how much delta V we have. Okay, the two landers are off, and now we have 8,378, so they were basically 100 meters per second apiece. We still have the same food, so we didn't accidentally lose any of that. And, well, off they go. I mean, I could... I, I don't think I can remotely control them. I don't know. It seems like it, actually. 
uh, well, can't engage SAS, but we can do this much. There was no additional room for MMH and Mon 3 on board. There is on the capsule end, but the capsule already is full. It had that fuel locked. So we're going to be relying solely on our our reaction wheel in order to turn with the mission. Okay, we have exited Pluto SOI, so I have to replot the the plot, the maneuver. And it looks like we need another 5,441 meters per second. And we have that, so that's good. So that note is in 24 days, and our total burn time remaining is 54 days. So roughly about right, hopefully. And again, our approach is in 14 years and 30 days, and we have 40 years and 60 days of food. So we'll try it. So continuing on, nothing has been a deal breaker yet. We continue to burn our ion engines, and I'll make sure we're pointed properly at the node and continue on here in the middle of solar SOI. It's an interesting course. I mean, sort of straight in, straight-ish anyway. And of course, creating the node when you're this high up is an interesting experience also, because when you think about it, even if it's just a little bit further away, that's 259 days. You know, if you're all the way over here, that's five years. <laughs> uh, actually, on Pluto's orbit, it's even uh, slower because we've, act we've already brought our periapsis in uh, just a little bit of uh, ways away. And you're talking about tens or, and of course, on the opposite side, hundreds of, well, 100 years on the opposite side. So, yep, interesting noting when you're this high away from the sun. But uh, we continue on, and our Kerbals remain optimistic. Okay, here we go. The final little bit of a very, very long process. As our orbit is coming in, last little bit of burn. We got a moon encounter there. That won't help. <laughs> it won't. Not at the speeds we're coming in. In a way, ion engines are good as far as this part is concerned because you can get the approach pretty accurate. Ion engines are really, really good at doing hundredths of a meter per second. Okay, well, that'll do for now. Um, I assume we want to send the ship out a ways. There's another sound going on. Oh! I was watching the Ariane 5 launch while this was going on, and uh, they're, they've got some other background noise. Anyway, so they're on their way back. It's going to take um, 13 years and 340 days, and we have that kind of food. I'll try and keep the time warp low, the time warp factor low, so it'll take a little bit of time to cover that 13 years. But hopefully that means that the water will recycle properly, we'll see. And yeah, uh, just to get a sense of how fast we're coming in here. First of all, let me see what the time is when we enter. 13 years, 340 days, 11 hours. And so it's about one day through Earth SOI. Oh, 15,000 captures. So. Excess velocity, something less than 15,000. Uh, if we're looking for just a very loose capture, I mean, we don't have this, but it's better than what we were looking at before. So a bear capture, 13,685 meters per second. So, yeah. It's going to be interesting. All right. Okay, well, we actually got a lot of water back because we had stored plenty of wastewater that for some reason the recyclers had not been able to recycle. And you notice it's accumulating again even though the recyclers are supposed to be able to handle all of it and be able to, well, handle whatever they can. The rest ends up waste. The wastewater shouldn't be accumulating. The waste can be accumulating and we have to dump that, but I, I, don't, I don't know how it all works still. 
But anyway, we now have three years, which is actually more than we had when we started out. So maybe it'll work out for us, or maybe it's gonna mess with me and at the end it'll turn out to be not enough again. You know, like on the way to Pluto we had some inconsistencies. We'll see. Okay, so we're sort of halfway through our trip back and here's what I've noticed about the water situation. It seems like the whole recycling thing doesn't work so well beyond the time steps that the stock game has, which is at uh, this level. It says times 1000 time, but that's not what it is with real solar system. It's 100,000, I believe, at that point, because real solar system goes uh, 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, 100,000. So, uh, but in the stock game, 100,000 is the top time step. So it can handle the recycling well enough up to there but if I go past that uh, then it seems to have problems keeping up and I have to pull it back to this time step uh, the fourth time warp step uh, in order to get it to recoup everything and I also take the liberty of dumping the waste uh, doing this making sure that we go to this uh, I actually go one past the safe time step because otherwise it'd be too slow I go to the second to highest and uh, time warp at that level and then once the wastewater is all gone I go back down to this level to let it recalculate so it's recalculating now and I'm dumping the waste as well so yeah once it's uh, finished recalculating this wastewater I'll go back to the second to highest time warp and continue on until the wastewater is all gone and then have it recalculate again so it's been that sort of cycle but that seems to get the water uh, correct. Well, I, doing that, it seems like my recycler, I changed the number for the recycler for what factor it uses in order to recycle. Uh, it was lower before on the way to Pluto and now it's higher. Uh, so I think it's gone too far. I think I should back off from that a little bit. But anyway, it looks like we will have the water as long as I keep doing this. Obviously this takes some time, but I'm doing other stuff at the same time. Ogling Microsoft Flight Sim videos for the new Flight Sim. Oh dear, I've, I've got myself all hyped up now. This is, I try to avoid that, but here we are. So you may be, you will be getting Microsoft Flight Sim videos as long as I can record and fly at the same time, that will happen. Anyway, I'm sure you guys aren't interested. I will continue this and try and get us to Earth again, and I'll see you there. Okay, an additional note for future reference. I'm just letting the water go now because we've got more water than anything else, but I just noticed that the boil off has started again. Remember, because we were getting so far away from the sun, there was no longer any boil off of methane and oxygen. But he, around here, about 750 million kilometers away, yeah, the boil off of the oxygen just kicked in again. So that, well, somewhere between Jupiter and the asteroid belt is where you get your your boil off again. So interesting to note for future reference. But we continue to proceed. We've got about a year left until we get there. A little bit less than a year. I've made a horrible mistake, actually. Well. Um, I guess you could look at uh, sort of on the bright side, but it just occurred to me, we have six Kerbals. The Lynx spacecraft only contains four. <laughs> um, okay, well, next time I'll have to either only have four Kerbals or bring a spacecraft that can contain six. I guess I didn't really think this part through very well. Okay, so yeah, well, anyway, the, I will try with what we've got. So we had locked food, water, and oxygen in here, so that's available. And we can unlock it now. It's 14 days worth for four. We will send the people in the Kerbatat. And I think they're all the special, specially designated peoples. The quartermaster, the technician, the mechanic, and the geologist. And finally, Roner. Maybe the quartermaster should stay with the vessel. I don't know. We'll go with this. Alright, so those four will brave the re-entry temperatures. We'll see. 
Okay, so in theory they should be in there. Uh, we'll unlock this fuel now. And decouple. Okay, it is Tamrian milling in here, but we don't really see them. It says depleted, but that's because it's below like 5%. Oh no! No, 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 not, th not starvation that quickly? But... Oh, uh, why is there no food? Oh, it was rebalancing. Gosh darn it. Okay, that was just the game being mean. Well, I guess we can risk the other Kerbal lives now. <laughs> I don't know if that's enough distance to reset the docking ports. It is. Okay. Um, so this time... I guess it removed the food because it was still rebalancing the food. Okay, well I won't put Tamri and Mailing in yet. We'll separate off the pod, check that it has food, water, and oxygen, and then put them in. Maybe if I lock the... well, then it still might say that it runs out, I don't know. And it seems like the pod has all its stuff. But what, what if the situation is sort of tied to the... Kerbals in particular. Okay. Alright, well, we'll try putting them in. Verify again. Yes, it has the stuff. And maybe the whole food, water, and oxygen rebalancing is tied to the Kerbals in particular. So when they transfer, instead of uh, continuing to rebalance what's in this vessel, it immediately started rebalancing what's in the Lynx. But how long is it going to take to figure out these numbers? Will we have enough time to depart? It's not really going faster when I time warp as far as figuring the numbers out. That's part of the problem. Okay, well, we we are getting closer and closer to the Earth, so... I'll try it. If they die, they die. We'll have to figure something else out as far as how to manage this. Okay, yeah, okay, uh... Um, nope. Uh, okay. Let me redock quickly. Oh, they died. I mean, that's just mean. Uh, I guess that's how it works. Well, we'll test the re-entry. They all died anyway. It's... <laughs> uh, if the pod survives, that's going to be sad in a way. Oh, I'm not capturing my cursor. Sorry. Uh, well, hold on. I just realized that I was doing something else and I turned off cursor capturing. There we go. Sorry about that. You've got a lot of Delta V. And how long do we have to use it? 19 minutes. Well, okay, uh, our attitude adjustment time needs to be lower. I don't know if there's any depth into the atmosphere that will keep us alive. You know, it's like... We barely skim the atmosphere and we still explode. I guess it will Alt F5 if there's a way of testing that out. Okay, stop that. I feel like maybe going sun up would be best for the solar panels. They don't even seem to supply us with enough power, to be honest, but um, we only need to keep the batteries going for the time it takes to get to Earth, so... Hopefully it'll be alright. Yep, it'll end up being just enough power. Okay, about half an hour before entry. We're at GTO, basically. I'll... quick save. And we are going to... Retro, use this 2,600 meters per second we have here. Okay, I think I'll go with 70 kilometers. In fact, let me 
um, shut down and Alt F5 again because the burn took so long and we could probably do a periapsis adjustment with this much. Well, nothing's gonna save us from the fact that we're coming in at more than 20,000 meters per second. Okay, pretty close to 70 kilometers. So, um, we'll activate the pods, RCS again. Ooh, the solar panels. Uh, this wasn't the kind of solar panel that I was actually going for. This is not normal. Anyway, we can get rid of the service module. We can get rid of the service module. Thank you. Okay, and surface retro. The G forces are also going to be quite high, huh? Potentially. I forget if I've fixed the descent mode on here. I have not. Uh, that changed in 1.8. Between 1.6 and 1.8. Okay, well here goes nothing. 21,740 meters per second. We have gone, gone contact with the atmosphere. Okay, we didn't immediately explode. That's good. We're not slowing down yet. We're getting red though. Oh, oh no. Oh, okay. Everything exploded. Okay, well, yeah, we weren't even slowing down. So the verdict is I don't think we can bring Kerbals back from Pluto. Um,. Not without packing a whole lot of fuel to manually slow down. Not with aero braking. This is a pretty good return considering. I mean, maybe the Jupiter flyby approach might work, but yeah. Anyway, a lot of data has been accumulated. We have learned a few things about returning from Pluto, and we will take that into consideration in future designs. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.